the middle arm proposal, which is um, an export facility that this government is allocating $1.5 billion of taxpayers' money uh, to, to build. Now, in Louisiana, USA, there is an industrial petrochemical project that's similar to the one recommended and encouraged by the NT government on the site of Darwin Harbour's middle arm, and it's known locally and now known around the world as Cancer Alley. Since oil and gas pipelines feed the chemical production next to the Mississippi River, ailments from headaches to stomach aches, heart problems and chronic illnesses have spread and spiked. This is the future that the Albanese government could be potentially be delivering for Middle Arm, which is located 2.7 kilometres away from the Darwin suburb of Palmerston. That is why parents, doctors and paediatricians have descended on parliament today. They don't want this future that the Albanese government envisions for them. They don't want the government subsidising Australia's cancer alley with $1.5 billion public money. The government calls this a sustainable development precinct. And uh, hey presto, the word petrochemical gets wiped from all government websites relating to middle arm. And they try and try to only talk about renewables and hydrogen, but their porky pies were exposed when at Senate estimates I asked bureaucrats, and they told me directly, they acknowledged that petrochemical and gas production was intended for middle arm. Now, the government still persists in saying that their subsidy wasn't for those things until US mega-frackers Tamboran told the Australian Stock Exchange that they had a legal option in the Middle Arm Precinct to build a gas export terminal to ship 6.6 .6 million tonnes of gas offshore each and every year. The Albanese government needs to stop treating these parents, these doctors and the rest of us like fools. Just admit that you're financing gas expansion and petrochemical production. Or, if you want to listen to the science, just rule out gas from using that export facility. You can't have it both ways. If the government was to change the contractual terms of its equity investment to prevent gas and petrochemical production at the site, they could kill the Beedaloo proposal, because there would be no guaranteed purchaser of that gas. The Beedaloo has enough gas to increase Australia's total emissions by 11 per cent. It is a carbon bomb. This project simply cannot proceed in any way, shape or form. Uh, now, Santos told the Environment and Communications Committee that it doesn't make any economic sense to develop the Beedaloo for the domestic market. It has to be exported. So if the government pulls this $1.5 billion handout or simply says, no, the export facility can't be used for gas, um, we could stop the climate bomb of the Beedaloo being detonated. The people from Darwin who are here in the building today have, have some asks for two ministers. The first message is for Minister Catherine King. Do not use this infrastructure money to enable gas expansion. The message um, for Minister Plibersek is to delay the release of the EIS until a thorough health assessment has been completed and requested. And I might just pick up Minister Watt there on an inaccuracy in response to a different question today, where he contended that health impacts are considered as part of an EPBC EIS proposal. That is not correct. The minister should know better, and if he doesn't, then he needs to get some better advice, start, and perhaps come in and correct the record. They should do a health assessment, but one's not presently required. The message from the Larrakia people is that they want a full cultural heritage assessment undertaken under Larrakia control before the EIS is released. Now they're using their voice to parliament right now and one would hope that the government could listen. And we had quite the journey from, uh, from Minister Watt and also from um, Minister Wong responding to questions on middle arm today. They first they're saying, no, this is great, this is just for hydrogen and for solar. But then they snuck in, oh no, it's also for an LNG gas export facility. That confirms what the bureaucrats told me in Senate estimates. We know this gas export facility would enable customers and would justify the economic expansion of the Beedaloo Basin. That cannot be afforded to happen. We will blow any chance of meeting your pathetic targets or staying anywhere near within one and a half degrees of warming. So be honest and use this one and a half billion dollars in a better way by ruling out gas or simply withdrawing taxpayer funding for this gas export terminal. Authorised by Earl Waters, Australian Greens, Canberra.